Ladies and gentlemen, today we have made a discovery in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015, whatever, that enables us to add features to the program that don't currently exist. And we're going to go through those, and you're going to see the code, and it's going to be marvelous. So let's take a look at those features now. And here they are. Use a keyboard shortcut to instantly press the back button in any bin. Toggle the motion effect triangle unfurl button toggle thingy. Instantly press the transform icon. Close the titler without having to use the dangerous Alt F4. Apply literally any transition you want using a keyboard shortcut. And finally, use a keyboard shortcut to apply any preset you want to any group of clips. That's right, it's all possible, and I'm going to show you how. So previously I made a video explaining how to highlight Premiere's effects panel search bar with a single keystroke through the use of an absolutely insane and complicated keyboard macro. You can watch that video over here, but don't bother because I found a better way. When I posted that video to Twitter, user FrozeHacks told me about the Windows Spy program that is included with AutoHotkey and AutoHotkey's control focus function. Uh, so to make this work, first you have to download AutoHotkey, obviously. Once you have that done, launch an AutoHotkey script and to use Windows Spy, right click on the AutoHotkey icon on your taskbar and select Windows Spy. It will pop up this cool little window that will stay on top of all the others. Click on Premiere and move the mouse around from panel to panel. You can see that Windows Spy actually has a pretty decent idea of where the mouse is relative to the panels. This is great because these panels are always changing in size and position during the course of editing. I messed around with the auto hotkey for a while trying to figure out how to make this work and I found a way. Here is the script. So this script is even better than my old one because it actually applies the effect directly onto the clip. So we're just going to go through exactly how this works. So this is a function that accepts a single parameter. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry, it will make sense later. So the first things in this function are block input, send to the mouse, and block input on. So what these do is they simply take away the user's ability to control the keyboard and mouse while the function is running so that you can't accidentally interfere with it. And at the end of the function, you get that control back. Then we get to key delay zero, and that simply types in really quickly. So if you have to type in a whole bunch of like complicated stuff into here, blah, 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 it'll type it very quickly rather than going slow. So get mouse position. It simply gets the position of the mouse wherever it's located and stores it in the X pause and Y pause variables. Control get pause. This will store the position of the effects panel search bar, because that's edit one, as X and Y variables. Width and height, you can just ignore. I don't use those variables. I just have them there because why not? Edit 1, I have determined. And Auto Hotkey Class Premiere Pro, I have also determined, will highlight uh, that. And I will show you that right here. Uh, let's just open up Windows Spy. And you can see that it is Edit 1 uh, text. You can even see the text that's in there. Um, and you can see that it is Auto Hotkey Class Premiere Pro. That's the important information here, the AutoHotkey class and the class NN, which is edit one. So you can see we've got all these other panels, class four, class two, class eight. I think the numbers kind of change. If you have a bin in here, that becomes edit one sometimes instead of the effects panel being edit one. It depends on the order in which you put them here. So uh, you might end up somewhere where you don't want to be. Uh, the next step is to move the mouse to that position. Now what I'm going to do here real quick is to comment out all of the code below this so that it will only go up to this point and then you'll see what it looks like when the program only reaches this particular point. Okay, so if you run this and just move the mouse directly to those X and Y coordinates, here's what it looks like. Bam. It goes up here. Right, no matter where my mouse is, it's going to go up there. Okay, and this point is the upper left-hand corner of the uh, little 
search bar here. So what we actually want to do is end up on this little magnifying glass. Not up here, we want to end up down here. So, go back to the script. I have determined that for my particular monitor, because it's a 4K monitor and I have 150% UI scaling enabled, it is 25 pixels to the left and 10 pixels down. Okay, so we're just going to see that. Save this, load it back in, and click the button again. Bam! There I am. No matter where I start from, it'll always, always, always end up right in there. So now we're on the thing, and then the next step is to click. Because if there's something in there, you want to click to select it. You see? Move, and then click. So the next step is to click on that button, and then you can press Shift Backspace, and then type in something. I'm just going to show you manually. Uh, let's say fast color. And then the next step is to move the mouse down here, click and hold, drag it back to your original mouse coordinates, let it go, and then Shazam. So in the code, what that looks like is, I'm just going to comment this all back in now. Okay, so the code's back to normal now. So then it moves the mouse down onto where the little icon is, right down here, waits for a little bit, clicks left, waits for a little bit. This is 10 milliseconds, it's barely anything. Shift backspace to delete whatever text is in there. Sends the item, it sends, uh, it types in whatever you wanted it to type in. And then it moves the mouse 52 pixels to the right and 65 pixels down. And that moves it down onto the icon of the item that you want. Instantaneously, relative to its current position. This code here you can ignore. This code existed to take that and then drag it upwards. But we're not going to be doing that because that would go into the effects controls panel, which would work, but it doesn't work as well as this. Instead of that, we're going to do mouse click drag, click with the left mouse button and drag back to the original coordinates of where the mouse is instantaneously. And then it turns block input off so you can move the mouse again. Okay, and then now that I have that function working and working perfectly, I can create all of these little functions which will all work to automatically type in whatever I want. So I have uh, Alt B, to type in fast color brightness. I have Alt P to type in crop. I've got Alt X to put on just a plain fast color corrector with nothing on it. Alt L does a 2.4 limiter on audio. You can see I'm going to do that right here. Bam! Oh, I love that. So I'll just go through this um, manually and then I'll do it instantaneously. So you have your mouse here. You push the thing and it'll instantly go here. It'll type in fast color. It will move down here click, drag, and release. Now let's watch it happen instantaneously. Bam. Oh, it works so well. Let's try another one. Bam. That's a crop. Let's try another one. Blur. Oh man, you guys. You guys. This is just bloody brilliant. I got it working. I got it working. The great thing about this is because it's dragging it back to where your mouse originally was, it will apply that effect to every single highlighted clip because it's the same as doing this. You see that? Every single clip. So, ta-da, you're welcome. That is how you apply any preset you want onto clips on the timeline. Now, like you saw in my ridiculous intro there, you can also use this pretty much exact same code for all sorts of other features. Now, I might make video tutorials for each one of these features individually, but you don't really need it because the code for these is very similar to the code that I just showed you. The only differences are the parameters for control get pause and the relative movement of the cursor afterwards to reach whatever buttons you want to press. In the video description, you will find links to all the code that I use for all of the features I've talked about. Some of these features will have video explanations and some might not. I don't know when I'll get around to that. So go nuts! If you want any of these features, just download AutoHotKey and go through my code line by line and tailor it to your specific setup. You're welcome. Now, listen, there is something seriously wrong with the way that Adobe has been managing the programming of its applications. Ever since the new mandatory Creative Cloud subscription-based model, Adobe no longer has any reason to deliver new and improved software because we're all stuck paying monthly for it if it's good or not. 
So instead, we get software that gets more buggy and more slow with each generation, or at least that's been my experience. On top of that, they can not even deliver the simplest and easiest feature requests that we, the users, have been asking for for over a decade in some cases. There is simply no excuse. In just a couple days, I was able to figure out how to bodge several new features into Premiere using AutoHotKey. And I am not a programmer. I'm a full-time video editor. This is so easy to do, and they won't do it. When there's a will, there's a way. I have the will, and I found a way. But Adobe does not have the will, obviously. So I'm going to find myself a better video editing program. So let's see here. We've got Sony Vegas, DaVinci Resolve, Avid Media Composer, uh, heck, even Final Cut Pro X is apparently getting a lot better lately. But I don't know if any of these are actually any good or if they are also rife with bugs and missing essential features like Premiere. So if you, dear viewer, have used any of these programs, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a comment under this video and tell me what you think of them. In the meantime, I'll have to stick with Premiere until I can find something better. I'd also appreciate it if you would submit a wish form to Adobe, asking them to please just fix the bugs and give us the features we've been asking for for so many years. There's a link in the description to my playlist that currently details 97 bugs and missing features. More on the way, by the way. But you know what? I already tried this, so don't bother. Don't waste your time. And on that note, I also wrote a small script that Adobe can use when responding to feature requests. Bam! Kaboom! Okay, but seriously though, the criteria for evaluating what features should be added should probably be re-evaluated. And please, let me know in the comments, am I off base here? Like, do I have it all wrong? What's been your experience like in the latest version of the Adobe products that you use? Have things been getting better or worse? Sorry for the rant. Uh, I might go more in depth on that subject later. But in the meantime, enjoy the new features in Premiere, courtesy of yours truly. See you next time.